Hello, it's Duncan. It's been six months since I had a major and public sense of humour failure with Gradle, but it's still the built all I know, and to be honest, has been relatively painless in the Gilded Rose codebase. I do find that it helps to periodically refresh my mental model of how build tasks relate to each other, and how Gradle decides what gets run when. So today, instead of arguing with our build, let's try to understand it. Clean has been skipped as well. Now, I don't know what on is going on there. Let's just remind ourselves about our build.gradle.kts. This is a single project or single module Gradle build. There's just this one build.gradle.kts. We have a number of plugins, including Duke and Flyway, that will become pertinent in a minute. We pick some things out of our environment. We have a whole bunch of dependencies squirreled away. But up to this point, this is a pretty standard Gradle build, I think. I've made a couple of changes since the last episode. One is to suppress warnings here for our Kotlin compile. We were getting warnings about context receivers that just get in the way while we are looking at the build. Full disclosure, I also migrated some HTTP4K and Playwright functionality that had been deprecated or moved. We can pick a flyway here and we can figure Duke there. Now if we go over and have a look at the Gradle view, you can see IntelliJ here is showing us the tasks that we can invoke. And they are in categories, so we've got tasks like build and build setup, don't know what that is, mm. stuff, documentation, building the Java doc. We've got tasks that are contributed by plugins like Flyway. So because we said we've got a plugin here, a Flyway that has Flyway clean baseline and so on. Same is true for Duke, which gives us this generic Duke task. But normally what I run is build. So build is up here. So let's just run build in the command line. We go here and do dot slash gradle w build. Some things happen. We see the names of tasks happening here. And then everything goes away and build is successful. When it comes to working out what's happening in our build though, everything going away is not very helpful. What we can do though is we can add in minus minus console equals plane as a flag to gradle. And if we do, and I'll just move this up like that. Then now, instead of writing onto one line, we see everything happening sort of in order. And you'll also notice that that was a lot quicker than the previous time. Previous build was 10 seconds, that was less than a second. And at least one of the reasons that it was quicker this time is because most of these tasks didn't do anything. So this one was skipped. These are up to date. We'll cover what that means later on. In fact, everything was up to date. So up to date means that we didn't have to compile Kotlin and we didn't have to compile Java and we didn't have to generate Duke and so on. Now then, notice that we said build, and build was the last thing that happened, but all sorts of things happened before that build. And the reason for that is dependencies between tasks. So build effectively means do all these things, but that happens automatically. We haven't had to say that in order to build, we need to generate Duke and compile Kotlin and jar things up and compile and run tests and so on. That's all part of the convention and configuration of Gradle. We haven't had to say those things in our build.gradle.its. That does mean, though, that it's quite hard to predict what will run if we run a particular task. Not only because some of these things may be up to date, but because we only run build, but we got all these other tasks thrown in. You can kind of look up in the Gradle documentation what build depends on, what will happen if you do build, but there doesn't seem to be any built-in way of asking it. There is, however, a plugin, of course. In fact, of course, there are lots of them. The one that I saw recommended was this one, or Barfu in Gradle task info. So let's install that. We can basically just add this line to our plugins in there. And if we do, then we can invoke the TI tree task before we invoke another task. And it will show us what that other task would do. So let's we'll take TI tree back here. We want the console plane. We want to do our build. But before we do the build, we're going to say TI tree. Let's see what we get. OK, so at the bottom, it did the build, although everything was skipped. But at the top here, you can see that build is itself composed of an assemble task and a check task. And the check task is composed of a jar task. And the jar task requires that the classes task have been run. And the classes task requires that compile Java and compile Kotlin have been run and so on. The key things for us here are that build builds a jar file and builds the tests and runs the tests. Also worth noting in here is that whenever we do compile Java, or compile Kotlin, we also get a generate Duke thrown in for good measure. Now the jar file is part of standard Gradle. So the question is, how does the jar file know that it should do generate Duke? And the answer I believe is that the plugin is able to attach to build phases. 
so that when we say here we want to use the Duke plugin, the Duke plugin is able to say, okay, well, whenever you do a compile Java, I want to have a look. Or in fact, in this case, be run before you do compile Java so that I can generate the Java that represents our database. Also note that generate Duke appears a lots of times in this tree here, but it will only actually be run once. And Gradle's job is to make sure that it's run before any of the things that say they depend on it. Okay, there's one more useful thing to understand about a build, and that is that if we look at our project tree, it's here, for some reason just clicking around has been enough to persuade IntelliJ that Gradle just isn't working, but if we refresh everything's good. Okay, back to the project tree. Almost all of these tasks won't write into our source main or anywhere else in our project. They will only write into the build directory. So you can see here the test results end up in this build directory, generated source, that's Duke, ends up in there, Kotlin compiler metadata and so on ends up in here, our class files end up in here. And so if I delete this directory and then redo a build, I'll take out the DI tree bit, then you can see that unlike last time when everything was skipped, now everything has to run and does so in nine seconds, not bad. But if I run again, then everything is up to date and we run in less than a second. If we want to make sure that everything runs, then we can invoke clean, which is a task before our build. And that essentially just deletes the build directory so that everything else has to actually do all the work for a living. There we go. And again, if we don't clean and just build, nothing has to happen. As well as building on the command line, we can also use this Gradle view. So we can do a build here. And if I run that, then you can see we get a nice little view here of everything that happens. So generally I'm going to use that one rather than the terminal for a bit. Okay then, so far between our builds, we haven't actually been making any changes. But if we change the source file, we do want a compile to happen. So let's just see, let's go to app.kt and Let's just add in some code here. So we'll say val del me equals hello. Now if I rerun this build, it took three seconds to run. Let's see what actually did run. Well, generate Duke was still up to date. Process resources and test resources, they were up to date because we haven't changed any files in the directories that they look in. But compile Kotlin wasn't up to date because we'd added in this line. So the Kotlin compiler would have been invoked in order to compile this. Java was up to date, that was fine. I don't know what classes does, but given that we have a change class file for this app, that class file will have been put in the jar file, so that task was run. Assemble is a task that can be configured to do other things with the jar file. Compile test Kotlin, that has been run, despite the fact that we haven't changed any of the Kotlin in the tests. But because our test sources depend on our production sources, we need to compile them to make sure they still compile against the production source. Okay, finally, test is run. So in fact, all of our unit tests will have run in that time. Build was the top level thing that caused all of these other tasks to run. Phew. What if I rerun this build? Well, now nothing has changed, everything is up to date, and it all happens very quickly, including notice that we didn't run the tests. That was why this build was so quick. But Gradle's model is that if compiling the production code in the tests hasn't changed anything, then it doesn't need to run the tests. There are a couple of ways we can see what tests have been run. First is to look at the test report. So the test task generates in build reports tests here. This index.html, if we look at it in something else, you can see that we ran 185 tests and ignored 28. Failed tests end up in here, or we can drill down into what was actually run or not run in that case. This test report is a bit tedious, although it's handy if you're running in a continuous integration server. More useful is that if we go to Gradle test in here and run specifically the test task, then IntelliJ installs a test listener and shows us which tests have actually been run. So a lot more like running a test from the source. If we run this again, you can see, yes, test events are not received. So having run the test once, it won't run it again if nothing has changed. We can make things change by editing this file back and then rerunning tests. And there, they're all run again. Given that this app class is at the very top level of our code base, very few tests can actually depend on it. You might think that Gradle would only run the tests that could logically be affected by a change, but that's not true. It runs all the tests. And that's true even if we just change one test. So if I go here and run, uh, let's try report HTTP transaction tests. 
if I edit this, we'll put in a print then so that something happens. If I rerun the tests, they all run. And if I change just this one test and rerun, then they all still run, despite the fact that this is the only one that could possibly really be affected. Hello, it's Duncan, advertising in my own video. If you're going to be at Kotlin Comp 2025, or even just in Copenhagen in May, then you should totally be signing up for the workshop that Nat Price and I are running. It's called Refactoring to Functional Kotlin, and will give you hands-on experience of taking legacy code and safely migrating it to a functional style. Places are limited, so buy now at kotlincomp.com slash workshops. Now then, in our build, we have two plugins, the Duke plugin and the Flyway plugin. I think maybe more logically that way around. Oh, there we go again. Just an edit means that IntelliJ gets confused, but if we refresh Bradle, everything is fine. Now the Flyway plugin is used to set up the database. So it reads our migrations, which are in here, DB migration, and applies them to the database. But if we look in the task tree here and search for Flyway, you'll find that it isn't there. So in fact, when we build, no Flyway tasks are invoked but we need a local database to run our tests against. You see that if we go to the database plugin and this is the test database, I just refresh it. You can see that it has two tables, one for our items and one for the flyway schema history. If I drop all of the tables, now our database is empty. And if I now try and run our tests, we'll go back to Gradle and say, test safely in the knowledge that that will have to build all the code. So let's try and run it. Okay, so compile Kotlin has failed. Let's see if we can work out why. We'll go back up and have a look at the tasks that were run. Generate Duke ran, and Generate Duke went to the database, discovered it was empty, and so it removed the generated classes that it had created previously. But as we were compiling against some of those classes in, for example, DB items, that compile now fails. So if we were to do a clean check out of this project, we can't just build it. We have to do a flyway migrate first. And in fact, I think I put that in the build instructions here. It says you need to set up, we need Java 21 and Docker, we need to start Postgres. And here, the first thing we need to do is Flyway Migrate. But just because the Flyway plugin didn't insert its task into one of the build stages doesn't mean that we can't. What we can do is we can go here and we can say that our Duke task, this one here, generate Duke, depends on, and we can do various things here, but in fact, we can just type in a string Flyway Migrate. Now we know that generate duke is run as part of the build task. And here we're saying in order to run generate duke, flyway migrate must have been run first. So if we go back to our command line and run dot slash gradle w minus minus console equals plane and run the ti tree build, let's see what happens. Okay, now you can see in our task dependency that generate duke depends on flyway migrate, but flyway migrate was skipped. And I suspect that's because generate duke was skipped. Now, I don't know why generate duke was skipped. It seems to me that I've changed the build file. What should happen then is that all bets are off and it has to rebuild. But we can force that with a clean. Except that we can't because clean has been skipped as well. Now, I don't know what on is going on there. This is warning more than one task is specified as an argument of TI tree. Maybe TI tree is doing something strange, but let's just go out and take away the TI tree. We'll run the clean just on its own to make sure it does run. That did run and is successful. And if we're right, there should be no build directory and there isn't. And so now if we run build, oh, you know, I honestly expected that to work. Let's see why it didn't. DB items is unable to compile, which is a sign that generate duke didn't actually run. Let's have a look here. Flyway migrate was run, but generate duke wasn't. And the reason for that is this all inputs declared is true. And have a look in our database, check that that was updated. Here we are, we will refresh our test database and lo and behold, we do have our tables, that's good. But this all inputs declared here, I added so that generate duke wasn't run every time we did a build. Now, why was that? Well, if I take this out, in fact, let's take out both of these for now and run a build. Two, three, four, Five. You'll see the first build took 11 seconds and generate duke was run. No flyway migrate because we took out that line. If I run this again, as we would when we were running tests, for example, 
Generate Duke doesn't know it's up to date, and so it's run again. And so this build is really quite slow. It took three seconds that time, one second that time, and that one second for Generate Duke is spent every time we run the tests and makes everything a bit clunky, especially when I'm videoing. That's why I defaulted to this all inputs declared is true, which for various reasons switches off Gradle always running the task. So if I do this now, then you can see we get a nice quick build, and if we've made any changes, then our tests run really nice and quickly. Flyway Migrate turns out to be quick enough so that we can leave that in there and build, and that's fine. That would mean that we could come in with no database and do a clean build. And that has applied our changes to the database and generated the classes that we required because there were no classes there because the build directory was empty. The problem is that if we write another migration, that will be applied to the database, well, it's Flyway Migrate, but Generate Duke won't run because we've told it all inputs are declared unless we clean. What we'd like is for this generate duke task to be run if it needs to, and that's if we have any new files in our source main resources migrations. Can we make that happen? Well, it turns out we can. What we can say is that the inputs to our duke generate are some files. Now, technically speaking, our input to generate duke is the database, but given that flyway migrate will take the migrations and apply them to database, we can use the migration files as a proxy for what's in the database. So we can say this is going to take source main resources db migration. If we do this and now build without the clean, flyway migrate and generate duke have been run the first time, but now the second time that was quick because generate duke hasn't been run. Gradle looks to see whether these files have changed since it last ran generate duke. And as they haven't, then it's up to date. If I was to take one of these files and edit it, maybe just putting some blank lines in, and now rerun the build, you can see that Flyway Migrate ran and Generate Duke ran. But if I run again with no changes to this file, Generate Duke isn't run and we don't get that nasty delay before we run our tests. Gradle's working pretty hard in the background to make this work. When we declare these inputs, it uses the timestamp on the file and also generates a checksum from them so that after one run of generate duke, it can see whether the file data has changed. And if it has, it can check whether the checksum has changed. And if both those things are different, then it will actually run our generate duke task. It's worth noting, by the way, that having declared these files as inputs, we do need this all inputs declared equals true in order for this task not to be rerun, even when these files haven't changed. So there we have it. After all the nasty things I've said about Gradle, just adding two lines here. This depends on flyway migrate and then specifying the files that Flyway Migrate uses to change the database allows us to do the minimum amount of work from a clean build. So we can now take this, I think, out of here. And we'll just check that by once again deleting our tables. We'll go back to the command line to make sure. We'll say, make sure we can do a clean. That's fine. Now let's do a build. That's going to take time. It will initialize the database. There we go. Run all the tests. It's run Flyway Migrate, Generate Duke, and everything else. But the second time we run, really nice and quick, because Generate Duke doesn't have to do anything. And as we've seen, because we didn't change anything else, the test won't run either. So let's commit that. Check these. We change the order of the plugins. I think I might leave this task info in. That's handy. Nothing else has changed except down here, where we're forcing a run of Flyway Migrate, but then we're only running Duke Generate when migrations have had to happen. So this is only run Duke Generate when migrations have changed. Great. Looking back at our Gradle file, I suppose we should probably pull this plugin into our libs.versions.toml, but I won't bore you with that so that you're fresh and enthusiastic for next week's episode. In that episode, I think I'm going to have a look at test containers, see if we can use those to avoid having to start a database manually before we do any work. If you'd like to learn about test containers too, then please subscribe to the channel. If you press like on this video, it will help other people find it and might just reduce the number of minutes we spend in the world banging our heads against Gradle. And finally, if you've enjoyed this, then I think you'll enjoy the book that I wrote with Nat Price called Java to Kotlin Refactoring Guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.